I have a question for you um, before we get started with today's video. And that question is, what is the absolute worst um, faith advice that you've ever gotten in church? The worst advice I've ever gotten from somebody in church it's probably something I've heard every single Christian, including myself at, at points in times, say. Are you ready for it? Well, when you just don't know something, you have to have faith and just believe. I mean, chances are you've seen this scenario happen. You brought a friend to church and they had, you know, a lot of really big questions, or you yourselves went to church and you had some big questions. Questions like, why does God let good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people? And usually what happens is the small group leader, the Sunday school leader, kind of looks at whoever it was that asked the question, and they usually try and give a couple of answers. And when the answers don't satisfy the person asking the questions, they respond with, well, sometimes you just can't understand certain things, and then that's where you have to have faith. That's where faith comes in. When someone says that, they're not saying, hey, you need to just trust and wait on God. What somebody is saying is actually, I need you to stop asking questions right here and ignore this feeling or this doubt or this thing that you have. Somebody comes seeking God and they're told by the person in charge to stop seeking God and just have faith. But that's not actually where faith comes in. Faith actually comes into the place where we do know something. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says this, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. A lot of people are probably looking at a scripture right now and they're going, well yeah, faith comes in when you can't see the way. Faith comes in when you don't know certain things. But one of the key words in that scripture is actually the word assurance. Now think about it a little bit like this. If I sit down with somebody who's like, really wealthy, like, I mean, if I sit down with Bill Gates, for instance, I make the statement, hey, I really need a new house at some point in my life, and he turns around and says, oh, well, I'll buy you a new house. I have more assurance with that. If anyone can afford me a new house, it's gonna be Bill Gates. And so, when the Bible talks about having assurance and hope and conviction, it's talking about things that you already know. If you know that God is all powerful, you'll believe that he can do anything. And if God has told you something that he is going to do, you have that hope, that assurance, that conviction that he's going to follow through. So faith might have some unseen aspects about certain things, but faith itself is based off of what we already know to be true. And the only way to know more about God is to seek him and find him. That's why Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13 says this, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And now that you know this, you can have faith that if you follow and seek after God, you're going to find it. What's that thing in your life that right now is depleting your own walk with Christ? Maybe you've been ignoring it. You've been pushing it down in a way. Is it something unfortunate that happened in your family? Is it part of your own personal journey of trying to discover who God's made you to be? Here's where the second thing comes in. There's also the worst response that people can give God after they've sought him out. Okay, God, that's great and all, but I'm gonna need you to go back to heaven, go back to the drawing board, and come with a new answer to me. I'm not so sure this part of your word is really legitimate, but you know, God, my personal experience tells me this. When God tells you what his expectation for your life is, don't run from it. Instead, trust him in it. Because here's the truth. God doesn't always give you the answer you were expecting, but he does expect you to trust him with the answer that he's given you. I cannot tell you how many times in my life I've heard God say something that I didn't really like the answer to. And let me tell you something, when you begin to trust God, you start to see him do all sorts of great and amazing things in your life. Maybe one of the reasons why your relationship with him and your faith is so incredibly depleting is because you haven't been putting your trust in him. 
And why does God give us answers sometimes that were not the answers that we were looking for? We are oftentimes more concerned about our own personal comfort than the redemption of the world. And even though God is concerned about our own comfort, he is more concerned about the redemption of the world. And so sometimes when we've experienced really awful stuff and God gives us an answer that we don't really like, it's because it rebels against our own personal comfort, but it doesn't rebel against God's overall goal for the entire world. And so even though God didn't want that bad or ugly or traumatic thing to happen to you, the good news is God can use unfortunate things in our life, if we trust in him, to begin to change ourselves and the world around us. There is a story in the Bible, and it's one of my most favorite stories of all time. It's uh, actually the story of Job. So you have this guy named Job. He's a great guy. He has a lot of really good things that are, you know, going for him in his life. And Satan basically comes before God and says, the only reason why Job is serving you um, is because, well, you've given him all this really great stuff. Remember, this is all a part of the redemption of the world. He goes down to Job and takes every single thing except for Job's life away. And then these people basically come to Job and they go, first of all, karma. You must have done something really bad. You need to go apologize and fix this thing with God. And Job is like, I'm a good person. I don't know why my life sucks so bad. I mean, they probably didn't talk like that, but this is like my modern version retelling of the story. And he comes to this conclusion. He says, either God's not all good or God is not all powerful. Instead of seeking the advice of his friends, he then goes out and seeks after God. And he basically goes, God, my life sucks. And I don't think you're doing anything to help me in my situation. I need you to fix it. He comes expecting and seeking an answer. And then God shows up and he basically says, Job, the universe is complicated. He talks about justice and right and wrong and all the other things that God's trying to redeem. God's trying to redeem the world and Job doesn't understand it. And Job goes, no God, I really have no clue. And God's like, exactly. So what I need you to do is I need you to trust me, I need you to worship me, and I need you to keep serving me. Job chapter 42, verse five through six. I had heard of you by hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. The unfortunate thing in his life brought him to a place where he sought after God. And now he doesn't just hear who God is, now he actually knows who God is. When you seek God and you trust God, and then you go with what he's given you, you're going to have a more rewarding relationship with him. Um, Job began to still seek and to serve and to worship God. And because of it, God blessed Job. God blesses people who say, okay, God, I'm going to go according to what you said because I trust that you're going to do what you're going to do. So the question I wanna ask you right now is how is your faith feeling? Is your faith feeling really depleted? Are you feeling like you just don't have a close relationship with God? Are you feeling a little bit like Job, that unfortunate bad things are happening to you and you're like, God, when is it my turn to just receive some rest? Well, here's my challenge for you. If you're not seeking, start seeking God. If you are seeking, keep looking and searching and finding him. But when he speaks, be ready to trust him. Don't tell God to go back and bring you a new answer. And now if you trust in God, what does this mean for your own personal life? How does this change you? And when you seek, and when you trust, and when you go, according to the faith that God has given you, you're going to find that your own personal faith is going to be more vibrant and alive than it ever has been before. If there's anything that I said here that you disagree with or you would like more information on, um, private message us, we will respond to you. Feel free to you know, follow our you know, various pages to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next week on The Millennial Adventure.